All right, gents and 5% ladies, if YouTube analytics are to be believed, since uh, we're in the midst of this bomb cyclone winter thing and it's like two degrees outside and polar bears are roaming the backyard, uh, I figured it was time to uh, introduce the latest acquisition for the LTD. This will actually end up in the car, hopefully uh, this racing season coming up. But uh, for the time being, let me give you a little bit of background. So I've been looking into supercapacitors for starting the LTD at the track because I use the battery to run the water pump and the radiator cooling fan. And sometimes when you do that, if you're not careful, you can uh, end up in a situation where the car will crank, but there won't be enough voltage available to fire the ignition. So in order to work around that issue, uh, I've been thinking maybe a bank of supercapacitors might be the thing and a smaller battery for the purpose of running the the radiator fan and the water pump uh, might be a better way to go it'll probably be lighter and everything else so I was looking at some of the bigger super caps and I ran across this thing so this was up on eBay by a company called Micron they're based in Tennessee it is roughly the size and shape of a tractor battery it might be actually a little bit taller but uh, it's about the same size this way uh, so I found out that this thing was actually on an auction and it was less than buying the individual capacitors inside would have cost me. So I decided why not, let's bid on it. Um, and I did and I won it. Now these guys actually are really cool, I contacted them uh, after I got the thing and uh, had some discussions because I plan to have some fun with this uh, before it goes in the car. We're going to try welding with it and everything else. The benefit of supercapacitors is they don't store a lot of energy compared to like a lead acid battery. But what they do store, they can deliver in tremendous bursts because they have very low internal resistance. So the battery that's in the car has six, I believe like 660 cold cranking amps. This thing has 1,500 plus, and it weighs about a third of what the battery in the car weighs. This thing weighs like 11 pounds. So anyway, so the very first thing I decided to do since I was in the middle of a massive uh, work period, and then we got hit by this cold thing, is I decided to charge it up and see how it discharges. So let me move this over and bring in the graph. This actually represents a period of three weeks. Um, it's 21 days out to here. And I charged it up to uh, 16 volts. It actually turned out to be 15.92. And uh, let it just discharge on its own. I would just take readings, sometimes several times a day, sometimes twice a day, uh, on a rare occasion, you know, like once a day. But I was pretty good about it. And at first it started to drop pretty fast. Uh, it went from, 16 volts or 15.92 volts down to you know 14.92 volts in like half a day and that was a little discouraging so losing an entire volt in half a day would mean the thing would be dead in a short span of time so I decided to run it out a little further and what happened was this exponential curve like we get from 13.6 volts which is right here, 13.61 volts, but and that's at just over five days in, it didn't drop down to 12 volts or 13.01 until four and a half days later. So it holds its charge pretty well in the areas we'll be using it. I thought about using a, a booster circuit to charge it up to 16 volts to give it that extra oomph, but really I don't need it. The LTD is not that hard to start. Um, but it would be nice not to have to sweat, you know, running out of juice in the battery. So again, from 20, for 21 days, it went from 15.92 volts down to 12.18. So in three weeks time, this thing still has over 12 volts available. Now, if it was only charged up to 13 and a half volts or 14 volts, which is likely what I'd end up with in the car, uh, it would probably, you know, still be able to start the car for another three weeks as the curve tapers off, the drop off tapers off. So as long as the car, as long as the starter is getting 10 volts, the car fires every time. And when I'm cranking, it'll actually drop down into the nine volt region and right around nine, nine and a half volts is when the ignition system starts having trouble actually firing the car. This beast here should not have that issue. So again, this is the 
introduction of the Micron Power Pack. We will see how well it does. Um, we're going to have, like I said, we're going to have some fun with it. Uh, I really want to try stick welding with this thing. You know, people are spot welding them and all that, but uh, I stick welding I have yet to see, and with this much current available. Now, again, I did the math, and I figured, well, it's got 1,500 cold cranking amps, so that means based on 2,600 farad capacitors inside here, there should be six of them. That's about what I figured out. I won't bore you with the math, but with some other testing, I got to that amount. Uh, and when you put them in uh, uh, the way they're wired in here, you actually end up with less capacitance but more voltage capability because super capacitors now can only handle about 2.7 volts. So in order to get the voltage rating necessary, you have to give up some of the storage capacity. By the way, this thing has approximately uh, an amp hour rating of about 1.7 amp hours. So where even a small car battery is in the 30 amp hour range, it, it doesn't have nearly the capacity to run the water pump, the fan, and all the other jazz that I need to run. However, that can easily be solved by adding a small sealed lead acid battery. In this case, this one is uh, 18 amp hours. It cost about 30 bucks. Um, it's pretty light. This thing actually weighs about the same as the super capacitor bank does. Um, so the two together, this should power the cooling fan and the water pump for the period of time I need it at the track and still have a reserve capacity. And then when I need to start the car, it'll draw from this monster and uh, it should work out pretty well. The thing should fire like gangbusters. So stay tuned, that was just a quick uh, introduction of this guy and uh, wanted to show you guys what a discharge curve on these things actually looks like because I really didn't see anything like this uh, on YouTube or anywhere else. So stay tuned, more to come.